the space bubble. We did the sun and moon charts. Good, I'm glad we, to hear these. We did the owl pellets, which are still somewhat fearful in my memory, um, and a couple other things, which I would say are somewhat out of the box in terms of what we would describe as the American education system. Yeah, they were then, that's for sure. Probably now it's... Well, with the PSSAs yeah. and all the standardized testing, I would, I would contest it might even be less so, but that's my mm. point of view. But um, with these somewhat quirky, out-of-the-box sort of things, it, did you always teach with those sort of mechanisms or using those tools, or how did you develop the idea to use those tools to, to teach? Um, probably more unconscious than consciously, you know. I guess what I felt was a value that helped me, I wanted to just share. And I, and I think that's probably a big part of my experience in education, to share what I felt was of importance and of value to others. I mean, if I didn't have those experiences, I mean, knowing some psychological or sociological tests when people don't have good experiences, they're limited in what they do in their own culture. So um, I always want to know what's over the hill or around the bend. Uh, in my daily life, you know, I couldn't just sit here in this one spot. Uh, I want to know what else is out there. Uh, even though this might be a good spot for now, I just always am looking for experiencing and learning more. And would you say that kind of describes your entire career? I guess I would. Looking back, you're making me think about things that I normally wouldn't evaluate. <laughs> that's my goal but, here. <laughs> and that's good. That's good. Um, and I'm glad to share. Um, and it's all been gift. I mean, that, that's how I experience life. It's all been gift, and I'm just thankful. Um, so I want, especially from the prison experience, the women... Maybe men could benefit the same way, but I had a very sympathetic uh, outlook towards women that they just don't have the experiences and opportunities. They get subjected and pigeonholed into a, a lifestyle that limits their opportunities and experiences. And so your, your goal is to expose them yes, to more. To make them aware. I can't tell you how many times I've probably said that. I just want, maybe we even said that in your group, uh, to be aware of things. You don't have to master everything, but just be aware. There's something else. There's another way of looking at things. People are different. Uh, everything. People are, people are different, but are they somewhat the same? Well, they're always the same in their basic needs and uh, to appreciate the differences, you know, we have so much in common, but to appreciate the differences, which are what make us so similar, uh, we could play on that <laughs> round and round. I mean, it's just a semantical thing. And so, when the kind of drawing back on at Hamilton over time, at least when you were in the public school system, you started seeing an increase in diversity as there was more immigration into Lancaster mm -hmm. County, and as there was a greater uh, African American and Latino populations continue to grow. Um, how did you adapt to that? I didn't have any problem with it. Uh, I didn't see as many in my class just because that also is a testimony to certain culture experiences, limitations. Uh, the Latino group didn't have as many children with the background, not necessarily the ability, but just didn't have the background that brought them to certain teachers' attention um, to get placed in a gifted program. And it wasn't the teacher's job to place them, but to make them available to uh, the testing by the school psychologist. Why would you, what would you say was the cause behind that? Well, I would just say it wasn't the high value of education in their family experiences, and many of them didn't have very positive experiences. Where in my St. Leo time, everybody had basically a good um, experience. In fact, here's an interesting, one of my students at St. Leo's one day was in tears, and it was a girl. And you know, oh, <laughs> what am I dealing with here? <laughs> so I pulled her aside and uh, asked her what the problem was. She thought she had heard that her parents were going to get divorced. Well, divorce, 
I don't think I've ever said the word divorce up till that time in my life. And uh, she was now exposed to it. And um, I'd say over my 11 half years there, divorce came up twice. Wow. And uh, because mostly all the families were intact families. And so by comparison, when you got to the public school oh, and the prison I mean, system. In the public school, it just only continued to grow at an exponentially about how many children were in a one-parent setting, how many children that might have lived in the same setting with different name, different last names, and uh, they would call one another a brother or a sister, but <laughs> no relation. Yeah, also. they're different fathers usually. Mm. And that was the the biggest uh, trend, and it was yeah just the the non-nuclear family, the nuclear family that did not exist as much anymore, and it just continued to evolve. And I know from talking to all the other public school teachers who had been in public education before me, um, definitely would all say that same thing. You know, it was just the family breakdown. That is, there, is there a way weakened. of bridging that? Is there a way of fixing that? For, for the public school system? Well, the public school system has to acknowledge it, and that was one thing that just got under my skin that I would insist that it was a home problem, but they were always looking for solutions and programs here at school, thinking that was going to solve the home problem. It would maybe help. I mean, you might motivate some children who are coming from very negative home settings and maybe that would, but they're children. Children don't have that same appreciation as we adults might, you know. Uh, it's easy for me to see now that as an adult, all the great influences that I had mm -hmm. weren't because of me. I just was able to ride a wonderful tide. And, uh, but they, they don't have that and they don't acknowledge it in the public system that I've ever really heard. And I... And I still think that's the problem. And, and societal issues increased, have increased this, or caused it to increase over the years. I mean, we weaken uh, the value of family. And, and of course, certain uh, TV shows in my earlier years were just going to be the beginning of that. And uh, taking attitudes away from family values. Mm -hmm. Uh, making fun of adults and parents, you know, great shows. I mean, I could be entertained by now, <laughs> but knowing back then, oh my gosh, what, this is the way kids what, are. It was setting up the president. You no, know, that was it. They were that was their role model. Make fun of the parent. You know, you can, I can name a lot of shows. I think if I can remember them all, that were breaking the mold. It wasn't Father Knows Best or Ozzy and Harriet <laughs> anymore. Was there a favorite day during your education, or during your teaching career? If you had to pick one. Favorite day? A favorite I'd, experience? I had favorite years. Favorite years. I had a certain favorite year in my uh, St. Leo's uh, years, and that was by class. Mm -hmm. you know, some classes just 